Welcome to this video on reverse outlining. This is a technique for thesis writers. We use this technique to help us work out how to keep our writing focused and structured and how to revise our writings, writing for structure. So usually before we begin writing, we might prepare an outline. This is an example here of an outline that I've written for a research paper. So what I've done is in the different sections, I've noted down things that I would like to include in those sections. So we all might prepare a different outline, but what I've decided is that in the introduction, I'm going to include these components and I think that's what I need to have in the introduction. But when I begin writing, even though I'm following the outline, what appears on the paper may be very different from what I plan to write. And this is because as you write, you have different thoughts and you make new connections in ways you hadn't thought of before, you're reading different things. So what appears is very different. When you write your draft, it's often very different from the plan. And many writers find this frustrating. Reverse outlining is a technique that can help you see your writing uh, in a much more clear way so that you can see where your writing is becoming confused and unfocused. So here's how it works. So step one is you take your written draft and in the margins, identify the key point of each paragraph. It's quite a difficult process because there may be many points in the paragraph. And if there are, this is an indication that you have to separate the points into their own paragraphs. And that's why your writing is confused, is because there are too many points in a paragraph. Step two is to take the key points and, and have a look at it as an outline and then compare it to your original outline. And this outline will show you what is on the page and your planned outline will show you what you want it to have. Step three is to reorganize the outline. And you can do this by grouping key points, by going back to your original outline if necessary. So you can create a new outline or you can stick to your original one. But bearing in mind that sometimes during the writing you come up with some good ideas. And step four is to rewrite your text. So cut and paste, group points, shift sentences, um, rearrange your writing to fit your new outline. Because you probably have really good material, it just needs to be reorganized. And step five is to do the process again until you are happy with the structure and the flow. So here's an example to show you what I mean. So let's begin with the outline for an introduction section to a paper. And this paper is about arguments in academic writing. So in the introduction section, I want to include three things. Why arguments are important to academic writing, what the basic components of an argument are, and then to provide an overview of the paper. So that's my plan. That's what I've decided I need to include in this section. Based on this outline, I, I write the first draft. And the first draft goes like this. Academic writing is challenging. Belcher states that the author, through the help of argument, helps the reader understand the main idea by creating a doubt that they may be right. The basic components of an argument are a claim and evidence. The main idea is validated by evidence provided by the research literature. This evidence persuades the writer the audience is also very important because the audience decides whether the argument is truth-like or more opinion-like. 
The argument should be first stated in the abstract. Jacob also suggests an activity to strengthen an argument of a paper. So I can see immediately by reading it that this is a little bit confused. My draft is definitely not the way I had planned. So let me do a reverse outline. And as I begin to do it, I can see that I have lots of different points in the first paragraph. So I can't even use one keyword. I have to break it down into sentences and use keywords for each sentence. So if we have a look at this, the first sentence, academic writing is challenging. I can see immediately that although the statement is true, I'm not really talking about academic writing in this paper. I'm talking about argument. So I can see that it's a little bit off topic. Belcher states that the author, through the help of argument, helps the reader understand the main idea by creating a doubt that they may be right. When I read this now, I can't even understand what I meant and I can't identify a key word. So I'm either going to have to delete that or rewrite it to make it fit. The basic components of an argument are claim and evidence. That works. That's part of my outline so I can keep that. The main idea is validated by evidence provided by the research literature. There are about three keywords in there and it's not about argument. The evidence persuades the writer. I can keep that. The audience is also very important because the audience decides whether the argument is truth-like or more opinion-like. I can keep that as well, but I can see the components of arguments are spread out and I need to group them together. The argument should be first stated in the abstract. This is probably very true, but it's not really relevant to this paper. Jacob also suggests an activity to strengthen an argument in a paper. Although this activity will probably be very useful, and it's something new that I hadn't thought of, this I will include in a later paragraph. So I can see from the reverse outline that I haven't really explained why arguments are important in academic writing. I've explained some components of the arguments, but these points are not together, and I haven't provided an overview of the paper. So I now know what to change. So here's my second draft. Academic writing is contested. In other words, there are disagreements about what we know as knowledge. Since academic writing is contested, it is almost always focused around an argument and persuading an audience. The more convinced the audience is of the argument and evidence, the more truth-like the argument becomes. The less convinced the audience, the more opinion-like the argument is. The basic components of an argument are a claim, evidence, and an audience who will recognize the argument and evidence as valid. Each of these elements will be discussed in turn in, these, in this paper and some suggestions will be made for activities for writers to develop arguments. So you can see I have now explained why arguments are important in academic writing. I've explained the components of an argument and I've given an overview of the paper. And what I've also added is something that came up in the writing which was an activity that I could include later on in the paper. So the point is not to stick totally to your original outline, but to incorporate your new thoughts and new connections into your new draft and outline. So my second draft is much more organized. I can still work on this, I can add in references, I can group things a little bit um, better perhaps, but it's, it is much more organized than the first draft. So that's much more like it. My writing is now a lot closer to the plan and I'm much happier. So use reverse outlining to help you think about your writing in a much more focused way to help you see what you've written. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope this technique helps you with your thesis writing.